At this point, I question the whole purpose of the Black Panther Party. In my thinking, uh, they were necessary. It was a shock treatment for white America to see black men running around with guns, just like black men and saw white men running around with guns. Yeah, that was a shock treatment. It was good in that extent, but it got a lot of black people hurt. My recruitment by the FBI was very efficient, very simple, really. Um, I'd stolen a car and uh, went joyriding over the state limit. And um, they had a potential case against me, and I was looking for an opportunity to uh, work it off. And um, a couple of months later, that opportunity came when uh, uh, FBI agent Roy Mitchell asked me to uh, go down to the local office of the Black Panther Party and try to uh, gain membership. We tried to develop negative information to discredit him, just like we did uh, everybody else. We, meaning the FBI, I tried to come up with uh, signs of him doing drugs or, or something, and uh, never could. He was clean. He was dedicated. I've had private conversations with him. Uh, we got along pretty well. So before we start, I just got ahead hit the record, but I ain't even asked Banks was he ready, man. But yeah, we was talking about Boosie and his alkaline water. Boosie a fucking legend, man. No, he got alkaline water. I'm waiting for him. Well, he got the potato chips as well, right? The hip hop chips. Yeah, he owned that shit though. I don't know how he finessed that, but yeah, he owned hip hop the little rapper chips or whatever. I thought Romeo had owned that shit. And where Pete, I know Pete pissed off. Pete got top ramen. He got toilet paper. You tried that shit. His Cheerios, P Cheerios, no. The P.O.s, that sounds crazy, but yeah, the P. <laughs> the, the, the Petos. <laughs> it's all right, man. I know that bitch had a penguin on it. I went to Walmart, and I was going dumping down the aisle. I was like, bro, should I ask these white people that they got the Master P cereal? That said, nah. I feel like you got to buy it from the No Limit store if it exists. <clears throat> I tried to buy it online. They won't let you. They were like, it just say, when you go on the website, it just say, in stores. I just go on the Master P website because it got a penguin on it. It's called like Percy the Penguin or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> Cause you know the nigga named Percy, so everything like Percy related. So I went, I went on the website and it just say in stores, and I was like, what the fuck? I did see the noodles though, the noodles in Walmart, but I'm not a noodle nigga, so I ain't, I ain't really fuck with it. But I, I need the hootie hoos. I'm, I'm looking so. All I see is the rap snacks. The Hootie Hoos, they got that on Amazon. Oh, no, this is the song. Nah, nigga, nigga about to listen to the song. <laughs> <laughs> How it go? I know it, but I want to Hootie Hoo, bump it up, bump it up. Hootie Hoo. You had me excited. I was like, damn, Amazon, I'm copping as soon as we get done. Nigga, it's like a hidden treasure. <clears throat> You gotta buy this shit. You probably gotta go through the obstacle course at Legends of the Hid Hidden Temple to buy it because I really don't see where you buy that. I think you actually do. Wait, you can't buy it from his website. You can't. They must have changed it. That be gonna take two months to get to you for a yeah. box of cereal. By then, I won't be hungry. Nah, that shit gonna be stale as fuck. That shit gonna be open already. Nigga that tried your cereal and shit. Damn mailman that tried it. This shit called Uncle P's cereal. No, it's called Hootie Hoos. You was right. Hootie Hoos, Uncle P. P. Yeah, nah, Uncle P. Cereal, Hootie Hoos. It's that's like too name. much. P, that's too much, bro. Just one name. I don't need that extra shit. Imagine if he just get, like, the Walmart brand, you know, that big-ass bag yeah. that'll give you instant, like, diabetes. He <coughs> put that in the box. That's what it is. That's another thing, because we, we're on a conspiracy podcast. So... That's another conspiracy because, like, they had us legit thinking that that store, that big bag cereal was nasty. That shit was good as just as good as the name brand ones, to me at least. Uh, anything? I got a reaction to Cinnamon Toast Crunch for some reason, and I've heard conspiracies about Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I've heard a lot of conspiracies about Cinnamon Toast Crunch and uh, Frosted Flakes. What kind of reaction you got? They said like it's like silver in the Frosted Flakes. Silver. Yeah, like it's not made of. Hold on, let me see if I can look that up. They said it's not made out of actual <coughs> oaks. It's made out of something else. Oh, they do say they say save a lot. Going back to the who you use, save a lot. Seven Eleven. Why would you sell cereal? Seven Eleven, Walmart, neighborhood market, and Audi. Fuck, fuck it, man. We have to go to save a lot today. All right, fuck me. If you know, one I don't even know. Market. I don't even know where that shit at. To be honest, we'll be riding around forever, but. 
I don't know, man. I gotta get that that cereal. But it say Walmart. I bet it ain't in Walmart. I ain't see it. In the neighborhood I never market. Been, I never been to Audi's. It's an Audi right by where you at too. That shit. Don't go to Audi's. Ain't nothing there. Yeah. I never been to Audi's, but yeah. The cere- but the you said it got silver in it. Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. Cause I, heard- I know I can't eat cinnamon toast crunch. Cause I ate so much of that shit as a kid. Like literally, I can't eat it no more. Cause you know my pops a truck driver. Yeah. So uh, he had to do a couple like runs for like uh, who is that General Mills that do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, General Mills. So they gave that nigga like five cases of like cinnamon toast crunch. And it took us like almost like a year to eat that shit. And just imagine eating like twenty boxes of cinnamon toast crunch. You ain't gonna eat that shit no more. So I'm good off that cinnamon toast crunch. Yo, yo, your blood sugar should definitely be dropping every five seconds after that. It's just now. I think I feel like it's just now good. I'm just now out the paint with that shit because I ate like a almost two years worth of that shit. So it got plastic in it. I saw some. Here it is, right here. Would you eat Frosted Flakes? And I think they do an experiment on it. It's on Facebook. I'm going to find it, bro. I don't want to start off the podcast when we supposed to actual have facts, but I swear I saw something like that. It might be true, man. I, I believe, to be honest, but that would suck because Frosted Flakes is my favorite cereal. What's, what's the top five cereals? Frosted Flakes. To me, it's Frosted Flakes, Apple Jacks, Fruit Loops. And after that, it don't even fucking matter to me. Uh, Captain Crunch, even though it fuck up the top of your mouth, pause. Nah, that should be. You had you need a spit cut for that another pause to that. <laughs> you spitting out serious. That's the point of eating. Nah, you be spitting out blood, nigga, for that shit cutting up the roof of your mouth. Fuck it, man. Most good things, you know, that you eat can fuck you up long term. I, I ain't fucking with Captain Crunch, but I, hey, man, that's it's your list. Nah, Captain Crunch with a, them Oreo O's before. Remember, we had to get them from Korea, but now we can get them in Walmart. Oh, they still make those? Yeah. My teacher used to buy them shits. Yeah, but remember a couple of years ago, we had to order them from Amazon, and you had to get it from Korea through Amazon. I think I remember people talking about that, but I ain't never, I ain't fuck with them like that to even do it. You yeah, know, that, that's my favorite cereal. I'm burnt out from, it was another one, I forgot the name of that shit, but it had like, I think it was Kellogg's too. I'll look up the name of it, but I was fucking that up for like the summer of 2013. I was eating that for dinner when I was broke. <laughs> I can every time I look at the box, I'm like, nah, I'm good. Niggas used to eat, you use a sh- you a uh, sugar smacks. Hell no, that shit. Sugar nasty. smacks was fire, bro. I'm a weirdo, bro. I like the cereal that gets soggy quick. Yeah, you yeah, I'm gonna drink it. I'm a weirdo, man. I'm a Yaku when it comes to that shit right there. Hey, I mean, you ever used to put uh, ice in your cereal? Like a nigga, no. I know somebody. I know I people that do it, but I never did that shit. I know niggas that done that. I know niggas that microwave their cereal. My grandma microwave her milk. She put it in a cup. She put the cereal out. She mm-hmm. microwave. She zap her milk for like thirty seconds mm-hmm. and eat it like that. That shit's weird to me. I mean, you know, old people got <coughs> different digestive systems, so maybe yeah. that help her go to the bathroom. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why she did that shit. It was the, she did it to me because you know grandmas they don't ask you whether you like something or not. They whatever the way they eat their food is the way you gotta eat your shit too. So. So I was like, Grandma, I want some cereal. And then they say, you know, I say, oh, to the microwave. I was like, whoa, whoa, what she doing? That ain't no oatmeal, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how she said. She said she like it like oatmeal. I like, make some oatmeal. Oh. <laughs> I got my ass beat for not eating chitlins often. All right, now that's abuse right there. Yeah. Why you thinking of the way I am right now? <laughs> Grandmother and mom beat my ass. That's why you be slanting grits and shit? Oh, no, nah, fuck grits. Yeah, she's the... I, I miss that woman, God bless her, but that's the reason why I hate grits is because of my grandmother. Like, bro, I had to sit there and just eat it. I'm like, bro, can you at least put add some more sugar? Put like grits delicious though. I, I'm I'm good. I don't know about the sugar and grits. I'm not a fan of sugar. I just need butter, salt, and pepper. That's all I need. Wait, hold on. I take that back. January, I had some grits. I think I told you that in the Discord. You went Earl. Nah, you didn't tell us this confession. Yeah, I, I'll show you the reason why later. And no. the young lady put me on the grids. Oh, she had. She must have had an ass. I, she, I, I'll show you later. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I saw. I'm gonna go ahead and nigga eat grits. I know you probably eat grits. She got to have an ass. I'll a show woman, you later. A woman, a woman with an ass. Or how you do anything? Ass a top quality top. I have you doing anything? Shit you normally wouldn't do. 
Oh no, I, I just say that stripper grip like this is good. <laughs> I ain't never had that shit in my life. Yeah, <laughs> niggas asking for more and shit. Oh no, I was going to the store. What you need? You gonna cook <laughs> something tonight? What you need? Get they, everything. It come with two sacks of grits and some shrimp. For that, that yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm really turning to one of them old niggas. Like you see the ass, and you just gonna keep looking. You yeah, fuck it. If you catch me, you catch me, baby. Yeah, that's exactly. But yeah, we are gonna eventually get to the topic, man. But real quick, so Banks out here, Jack. What you gonna say, nigga? 30, that's how, how many is that? That's an ounce. Is that even a deal? Cause ramen is like what is ramen? Like a couple cent? Yeah, uh, ten cents. Ten cent? That ain't a deal. That's how you know you can build your toilet with it. Besides that video we seen. I mean, that shit must be top quality. It's not. It's, it's literally top ramen, just with Master P on it. He's just selling it like drugs. Like, bro, look, look how it's thirty one dollars. Yeah, that is, that price is ridiculous. I don't know P about that, man. So he's selling twelve packs of the ramen noodles for thirty one dollars. Yeah, that might just be Amazon marketing it up. I don't know. I mean, in the store they'd be like four or five bucks for one of them little uh, cups. I don't know, P wallet. I'm gonna buy some. Okay. I, I, I respect it because it's a black business, but yeah, nah, that shit crazy. What? So uh, Banks out here in Jacksonville. So the area of Banks is uh, his Airbnb is, is that I was telling them it's a crazy story. So that area, the whole area where you at now, it used to be like KKK ridden, like never like it's still some because you still see the flags out there. It's still, it's still be, uh, it used to be like KKK ready. It used to be a lot of Confederate motherfuckers. And the city pretty much ran the motherfuckers out of the city. So all that shit where you see the Chick fil A at, the shopping center, used to be where them KKK motherfuckers lived at, their houses. And the city pretty much ran the motherfuckers out of the city and built all that shit there on some. What would, what would it be described as? Kind of like. What's something where somebody just ran somebody? The Black Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty much like the reverse of like the Black Wall Street where they like ran some crackers out the city. I was about to say all 200 of them was living in one shack? Yeah, it's pretty much like all that over there in that area was just like KKK members. Matter of fact, my brother and Eric go to the same, Eric used to go to the same high school, First Coast. Mm-hmm. My um, my brother went to that school. Then my uncle he used to go to the school, that school in the 90s, and he used to literally have to fight KKK members all the time, and that school is in that area. No wonder he was taking the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, it built up aggression. Yeah, they probably gave him CTE. He used to have to fight <laughs> KKK members all the fucking time. And there's too many of them, too. Yeah. Like, you know, as we get into the topics and we start talking about it, <clears throat> we learn how that uh, the KKK is basically shit, all gangs combined into one, so to speak. They, they GD folks. Yeah, pretty much. It ain't a hundred. I don't know if it's a hundred thousand uh, KKK, but yeah, it's like, a lot of them. Like GD, but it, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. So in that area, it's just they, they put all the KKK. So you know, uh, you know Chris Henry, right? Chris Henry, uh, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry from the Titans. Yeah, I was gonna say Chris. He he from Uly. So what happened was all the KKK people when they had to get the fuck up out of Jacksonville, uh-huh. they moved to Uly. To where Derrick Henry's at, so no wonder so that nigga he, be running. So he had to run for his life, literally, because he had to run from all the fucking rednecks chasing. No him. wonder he swole that's and running. That's why he fast as fuck now and strong, because he literally had to run from his life because all them racist motherfuckers had to get up out of that area and go over here. So that's why in this area, well, in, right here in this area where I'm at, it's nothing but niggas. You gonna see nothing but black people right here on this radius. It's hard to see white people. But then when you go 10 minutes to where you at, same zip code, it's still leftover white people from when the cake, when they was out there, the Ku Klux Klan in it up. Still got some of their grandkids still living over there. And then also you got military niggas because, of course, they're going to build houses and they're going to put a bunch of military niggas in the houses. And whatnot. So that's a little history lesson, a uh, racist-ass ocean way where you're at. But you see, I told you, I, I sent you the video. They got the Proud Boy flags and they got the Blue Lives flag, yeah. flags. See, they put them up because they know them them, uh, them military niggas owned by the government. So they ain't going to say nothing about your KKK flags. Yeah. Because they report their ass. They're like, yeah, what, you got a problem with my flag? I'll report you to your marshal or whatever. Who, <laughs> who Don't <fuck>? do it. <laughs> 
I need to keep my gun so I can shoot more poor people overseas. I need my, they need their Camaro money, so they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do nothing about the KKK flag. I know one thing. I know people, you keep up whatever you want. You got your Trump signs. I'm not living next to somebody with a KKK flag or a Confederate. It's a Confederate flag, but I call it the KKK flag. It is in a way. It's like, bro, this, <coughs> this motherfucker ain't in office. Yeah. He ain't been in office for two months. And y'all still got the flag up. When we ride, when we um, when I'm about to take you back, I'm gonna show you this house. It's a literally a house with Trump on it. I know you probably seen it. Mm -mm. I'm gonna drive you past that because we kind of have to go that way. I'm gonna take a picture. It's a it's literally a house, and all over that motherfucker, it just say Trump, 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 Trump. <laughs> Trump, Trump. It say Trump. You on you gonna laugh when you see that motherfucker because it just say Trump, Trump all over the house. And I'm like, bro, I don't like no president that much. They have Trump all over my house. I fuck with Obama got his issues. I don't like Obama that much. Just have Obama all over my fucking house. Barry the boy. Yeah, Barry. Yeah, just imagine a nigga house to say Barry, 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 Obama, Obama. Yeah, y'all look up a video. Never mind. <laughs> but Barry, we, we, he, he had, you know, it was a couple <coughs> houses, some pink houses God, that had funny. his name up there. <laughs> that's funny. So you know. Hey, we could drive by. You can elbow drop their mailbox. I don't know. They might shoot. No, bro. It's a landmine in that motherfucker if I touch it. Oh, yeah. I, no. wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even go. That there. whole area, when I look around, I'm like, damn, what if somebody got the sniper on me right now? Yeah. It's, um, shout out to um, Mr. Steve. That's uh, one of the dudes that live in my neighborhood, my mom's neighborhood. He actually a mailman, and his route is around here. So I'm pretty sure they don't let that nigga deliver their mail. I've been seeing a lot of Amazon Prime drivers. It'd be some young brothers, and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, the Amazon Prime place, like, right here. Yeah, I, I be, you know what I mean? I seen one, he had his uh, AirPods in yesterday walking around laughing. I'm like, shit. <laughs> oh, well, I hope he think, but you know, the young dudes don't give a fuck. Like, they don't care. They be yeah. with whatever. Yeah. Like I said, man, these, um, the ones over here, they not going to, they not going to bother you. They not going to, what they, what they say, uh, what's up? Press you. Yeah, bust a melon in a fruit fight or whatever, whatever that shit. Bust a grape, bust a grape in a fruit fight. They not gonna bother you, man. They just put their dumbass flags up. They be looking just... like, damn, that boy don't look like he from around here. Exactly. That's all when I seen that video. You walking around the neighborhood, I'm like, I know they ain't gonna do nothing, but like, I know they probably watching your ass. Like, yeah, fuck it, nigga. I ain't. I'm not saying this to be a tough guy, <laughs> listeners. I just. Mentally, I gotta understand. I ain't all the way there. I grew up in a broken household, so I don't really be scared of too much. Yeah. What y'all gonna do to me? Exactly. That South Central didn't. We're gonna talk about your your uh that on the bonus, right? Sunday? Oh no, we're gonna talk about a lot. We're gonna talk um, about a lot? Okay. Look, this is why y'all pay the don't, don't pay the ten. If you got ten, I understand. Pay the hundred. Pay, pay the hundred. For now we gotta start paying the hundred dollars shit. Yeah, probably that pay. Yeah. Just like what uh what Nipsey said back in the day, proud to pay. Yeah. Pay the hundred. Pay the hundred, why not? I mean, if you got to get some more sneakers, cool. I'm about to buy some. Well, I found out they racist, too, but I fuck with New Balance. Oh, what New Balance did? Uh, they was supporting Trump. They was putting money into the campaign. Here's the thing. That shit is slippery slope because they put money They put money into both parties. <laughs> so, like, all these people that put money into Trump, they put money into Biden, too. So, it's, like, it's kind of weird. It's, like, it's hard to judge. It's, like, it's like one of them things where we won't be right or wrong. Yeah. So I don't get it. So when people be like, "Oh man, this company donated to Trump," I'll be like, "Shit, they do donated to the Democrats too." So either way, they wasting their fucking money. It's a lot of people. give the money to the people. Right. It's a lot of people that still believe the left wing is, you know, not associated with the right wing. Oh yeah, of course they all working together. Yeah. Right. No. No. The, the end of politics is this decade because you got the young people once again that's saying, even though we not old, but still we at that age where. We grew up before internet. Now, the kids that's like 25-ish younger, they don't give a fuck. And they look up information. They go by what they see on the YouTube. Or, you know, some of them just actually read, which yeah. is, you know, a lost commodity nowadays. People just don't read, and they just say whatever. But these young kids, they're like, no, nah, I'm about to research this shit and look it up. And nah, these new kids are special, man. Yeah, I salute them, man, because they know a lot more than – Cause I'm just now learning shit to be honest. Not just now learning shit. I'm just now paying attention to more shit now. And I was like, damn, I should have been kind of tapped in. But it's just like one of them things where it just wasn't readily available to me. And 
I'm just doing some catching up. So I'm salute to the younger kids. They on top of everything and they learn this shit more quicker. Well, we had responsibilities growing up, jobs yeah. and shit, and still got jobs. Well, you got a job and <coughs> shit like that. So you I'm, know, I podcast for a living. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually believe that you know. Yeah, I podcast for a living. All right, so um, like I was just saying about um, people around our age, just kind of like just now learning around what's going on. If we could talk about Judas and the Black Messiah real quick, the movie. Um, a lot of people our age never even heard of Fred Hampton. How do you feel about that? It's not their fault. Yeah, it's not their fault. I feel I feel the same way. I feel the same way. It's, it's not really taught in school. When we got Black History Month, you'll hear about Huey P. Newton, which is great. Who's associated with the Black Panther Party? Or Man, I never Panther. heard about Huey P. Newton. I had to learn that on my own. All right, all right, around when I was twenty, I learned about Huey P. Newton, and I learned about him on accident. For real? Yeah. Okay, so the reason why I learned about him and Fred Hampton and the Black Panther Party is because in sixth grade I forgot her name. In sixth grade I went to Horseman Middle School, which is in South Central. She was a Muslim. Muslim lady, and she put us on to all that. I don't think she was supposed to teach us half the shit she was teaching us, but she did anyway. Salute her. Yeah. That's no. a rarity. Yeah, no, I don't know where she is now. I don't know if they shot her or not, because she was. <coughs> oh, nigga, you crazy. Cause she, no, she was snapping. She was, as she, that's the first time I heard Cracker. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Oh, she said, like, it was in, it was in class or? Yeah, this is, a, bro, and it's like, we only had, so it was a predominantly just like LA in yeah. South Central. It's uh, Spanish, black. Yeah. So this class, it was predominantly black, few Spanish people, and we had one white kid. I do remember him named Aaron, and Aaron was adopted, and he lived in South Central. White dude okay. used to wear the same thing every day, but he from a foster home, so you know I can't laugh at that. So he was there listening. Everybody else is tapped in as well, but for the most part, everybody was just running fades all day and talking shit and, and banging. Typical shit. Yeah. This this is when you actually had the game bang. You start at 12, 13 years old, somewhere around there. You just don't start, like, baby and all them at 28. Oh, Sada Baby. <laughs> Is Sada Baby 40? Nah, Sada Baby, like, 27, 28. Ain't no fucking way. That's what he is. He live, He from Detroit, bro. Yeah, they, they use they, it. They use you crazy. Look, Cash, I love you. You fine as hell, but stop saying you 29. You've been 29 for five years now. She, yeah, she lying about her age. She been 29, she about thir- She about 31, 32. Uh, you know, I was going to say 40, but I don't give a damn. Dang, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still trying to beat consensus. <clears throat> yeah, she got an ass on her, man. But, yeah, we talking about cash, dog. But, yeah, she been she been, she been been 30 or well, 29 forever. <laughs> For a long time. For a long time. I think you said that a couple years ago. Like, God damn, when you go, when you go hit your 30s? They exposed her. They exposed Summer Walker too, cause Summer Walker be like she twenty one, but she like twenty seven or some shit like that. That bitch been pregnant for a long time. Somebody said that on yeah, she been like pregnant for she been pregnant for a year. She been pregnant for like a fucking year, dog. When somebody said that, I literally start. I started, bro. I started dying, cause I'm like, yo, they right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, she been pregnant for a year, bro, like an elephant. Well, cause she feeding the baby goddamn grapes and water. <laughs> And she should have she should have dipped too because that nigga dead be dead. But that's just that's on another. Topic. What if she lying? Was she not pregnant? Yeah. Well, this is a hoax. She won't be the first one though that I know that lied about being pregnant. Okay, you say the R and B singer. We both thinking of, and I say another one. Oh nah, you ain't getting me canceled because I know I know what your mind goes. You try to get me up out of here with the high. <laughs> I'm talking about a, a woman I knew personally. You okay, talk, you say her you, name, then I say the the one that you don't know. Who, I know who you talk about. You talking about that lemonade lady? Yeah, the lady that made the reverse of yeah, you <laughs> ain't punch. you ain't getting me canceled, bro. I'm talking about a person I knew personally that was lying about being pregnant. Okay, so this person won't get you canceled. Who I'm talking about? Yeah, personally. No, no, nah, because that's get you shot. I'll be come on, bro. I'm straight, bro. <laughs> She did it to one of the homies. So, all right, so this is what she did, man. She she just said she pregnant because the nigga was about to leave her ass. And she was like, yeah, I'm pregnant or whatever. And she went as far as to getting, like, a fake bump. And then, like, look, I don't know where the fuck this lady got this shit from. This is in high school, keep it, keep in mind. So she got a fake bump. She started, um, so at lunch, she eat two meals and shit. So I'm going to eat for two. And then, like, eventually, like, 10 months come by, nine months. We were like, bro, where the fuck is that baby at? He was like, 
That nigga said, good question. <laughs> that bitch was never pregnant. So she risking her cholesterol just for a lie? Yeah, and then, like, when you try and call her out about it, her homie's like, just just leave her alone. She was stressing. We don't know why she did that. You know women, man. They When it comes to other their homies doing bullshit. Oh, no, the bonus episode, about- I'm with uh, Women, <laughs> hey, y'all thought I was tripping about the Anthony Mackie quote. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy on Sunday. Oh boy on the bonus episode. They really gonna get me the fuck up out of here. Yeah, I can't wait for that, man. That's gonna be funny, bro. What I was about to say, uh, why she didn't get the bodysuit like Nutty Professor? Uh she you gotta keep in mind this is high school, so she was about 17, 18. She probably had a budget for it. She just I don't know where she got the bump from. I don't know. She went to eBay or something with a fake baby bump. But So Summer Walker probably got that. This is a rebrand. I, well, I actually seen Summer Walker's stomach unless she got the CGI stomach. Probably. Night Professor 2. That's when they upgraded the graphics. <laughs> That's crazy. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Summer, if it was me, listen, ain't gonna be no fake pregnancy, Ben. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Shout out Summer. She fine to me, man. I'm up for Summer. Them insides would be Call of Duty Warzone. I'm shooting. <laughs> yeah, that club would have got shot up immediately. Oh shit! We can't. <coughs> I don't think we can say that no. What? Glove getting shot up. Oh, you can't. Why not? Uh, apparently, it's about the shit that happened a couple of years ago in said city where the magic play. Oh. Fuck! Are we on the Patreon. Hey, Summer Walker, I'm gonna shoot the shit out the club. Shoot the shit out the club. I don't even. Oh, you, you talking about that post shit? Nah. That post shit. Post. That's where you at in Orlando. The post nightclub. That's in Orlando. Oh yeah, I passed by when I first moved there, and I saw them damn pictures. I thought it was uh, another. This is another. The guy we on a Patreon. I know a nigga. He got shot in the post, and nobody knew who was gay, so he kind of got shot and he got outed pretty much. I'll be mad that as was, fuck. That, at was, God. that was fucked up. I was like, damn. I'll be mad as fuck. God, hey, bro. You see? <laughs> yeah, cause nobody knew he was gay. And then he got shot in the post because he got um he got shot in the leg and the arm, and then like he we found out he was in the hospital. We was like, bro, what? Happened? Oh, so he alive? Yeah, he alive. He lived. He oh, lived. Okay. But the thing is, people was like asking him like, bro, why was you in post? And he was like, and he pretty much came out the closet. I was like, man, I was just been like, bro, I was in that bit chilling. If he wasn't comfortable coming out the closet yet, I was just like, bro, I was just in that bit chilling, bro. I seen bitches at gay clubs. Yeah, it'd be in women in gay. Hollywood. It'd be women in gay clubs, but I respect them. I guess he felt like, fuck it, man. I'm live my truth. I'm a gay man or whatnot. He came out the closet, but I respect him and he lived and he's still he's still good to this day. Oh, okay. So this is Devin, right? <laughs> he was, <laughs> yeah, it was Devin. Okay, bad. I figured. Yeah, he got <laughs> he said it was Devin. I, I think Devin know who the nigga is. So yeah. it's him. It was him. That's crazy. He, he be everywhere. He be Orlando. He be you know. That nigga love Tampa, man. Okay, so you said it. He be in Tampa. Yeah, he be in Tampa. Every. I told you that's where the hoes at in Tampa. Yeah, I, I got a, <coughs> uh, Keisha Gray's out there. Uh, FBI. The porn star. Yeah, she live out there. She from there. Okay, we're gonna talk about that another time. Yeah, let's, I gotta figure it out. Get to this Cointel Pro shit, man. So, uh, Cointel Pro stands for. The counterintelligence program. So in 1956, Cointel Pro was made by the FBI because they was, because uh, you know, Russia, they had the little shit called the Red Scare where it was kind of like uh, communists was taking over Russia. So uh, the FBI and America got a little shook because they was thinking like, oh, we will to be overthrown like Russia. So any kind of threats to our government, we got to nip that shit in the bud. So, um, you got anything? They never elaborate on what the threat is. Um, just, yeah, they never really said it was. I just think they just was like, all right, man, we just going to use this as an excuse to fuck with niggas pretty much. Yeah. That's what I got from it. it. America is built on the foundations of, mostly a lot of Freemasons, it's built on the foundation of chaos. That's what it is. And that's what a lot of these people in power, even the people that's not in power, being the KKK and other white trash crackers that don't have any money, <laughs> they they built on chaos. That's why I call them cave dwellers, and that's what it is. It's- yeah. So um, they thought uh, these, they, they kind of deflect, they kind of identify these groups as, uh, hold, hold on, I got them in my uh, exact notes. So let me go down. All the different groups. And they, 
they kind of put them under the the category as communists, and we're pretty much these are just organizations trying to uh, show the lies of the government. So some of the people they targeted was, of course, the Black Panther Party, as we seen in the Judas and the Black Messiah movie, the anti-Vietnam War organizers, mm-hmm. feminist groups environmentalists and uh, animal rights groups, which I didn't even know this. I didn't know they was targeting feminists. When I when I first heard about Cointelpro, Pro, I always just thought it was against black organizations. Um, they, uh, of course, the Nation of Islam, Young Lords, which is a Puerto Rican independence group, uh, the American Indian Movement, and I think this is a lie. They got the KKK on here, so I don't believe that. I don't believe they inf- if they did infiltrate the KKK they did that shit to learn new shit learn more tactics on how to be racist well the KKK to me is just can I say well we talked about it it, 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 it might be just the new the Trump the Trump fandom I feel like every couple of years we get something that's in the variation of the KKK because the KKK still exists I don't know if people think they just went away yeah of course they exist we just seen them on um at the damn Capitol building. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they they are just they not in white robes anymore. They disguise oh, as just regular civilians, so to speak. Uh, I feel like some of these school shooters, well, they might be Cointel Pro or they might be a variation of the KKK when they have all these, as people call them online, false flags. When you have all these shootings, like we just had one in Atlanta against Asians. It seems to be a reoccurring thing every couple of years. We keep having all these shootings, and then it comes up about the Second Amendment law. Yeah, exactly. And then people, well, they should take the guns away. Then you got the red end. They're trying to take our guns. Oh, yeah, they do that. So now. It, that happens very often, and then, you know, it goes back to the martial yeah, law. Yeah, it's going to be – It's going. I'm wondering what's going to happen because, you know, after that shooting with the Asian in the massage parlor – a lot more Asians are buying guns now, so you know they're gonna have an issue. The government gonna have an issue with them buying up the guns because they had issues when black people was buying up guns when George Floyd got killed. So I don't know. I wonder where that's gonna go. You think that's gonna? What you think about that? It go. You know what? Honestly, with that, every time something happens in this country to, you know, Asians Americans or non Asian Americans, always think about how America is still in debt to China. Yeah, specifically yeah so it, it goes back to that and then me personally i've seen you know what the koreans and what the chinese have done in la and i'm not faulting them at that you know by it but they've been buying a lot of property too yeah so I, I see exactly what's going on and then they've been buying a lot of land in africa i think they own about is it five three to 13 percent of land in africa shout out to akon yeah, well, he probably only got one. I heard they've been stopping that shit because I heard the Asians was just straight up buying land. It, well, in America, they trying to use COVID to stop it. They're like, because a, a bunch of Asian people, they should just straight up. Well, people in general overseas, they used to buy land out here and just like sit on that shit. Yeah. Like land they never even seen before. They just buy it and just like, it just sit on it. But they using like COVID now to stop it. Be like, nah, we need to see you out here and do like a different protocol so well they probably send their family they got money because a yeah. lot of them they have family members that's poor and they live in cages in china yeah like so you, you could look that up anybody that's listening you could look that up that's that's not false they have people that literally live in cages in one bedroom houses that's correct. apartments so uh in the case of where we was going back to with the organization they also had a secret army organization when i looked up which is based out of san diego and if I'm not mistaken, they shot three of the Black Panther Party move, movement uh, members while they were out there, too. And this is in 1971. It was short-lived until this dissolution in 1972. That's, that's crazy. Call, and that's a part of Quarantine Pro. Yeah. In 1971 in San Diego, the FBI financed, armed, and controlled the extreme right-wing group of former members of the Minutemen anti-communist paramilitary organization transforming it into a group called a secret organization that targeted groups activists and leaders involved in the anti-war movement using both intimidation and violent acts yeah also they um they uh they did uh irs audits also during uh during like tax time to kind of like 
fuck with the fuck with uh, the uh, their targets. Also, what they used to do also is like call you in the middle of the damn night and call you a communist. And this was before call ID, so back in the day, you had to fucking answer the phone anytime you heard that motherfucking ring because you don't know who who was on the other line. So hello, banks resident. Nigga, we gonna come get you. That's exactly how I went. Bitch, who the fuck is this? That's all I would have said. Imagine you trying to get some sleep three o'clock, or you trying to get some ass, or whatever. You trying to Let's do something. Let's go with ass. Let's say you trying to get some ass, and next thing you know, you hear fucking Jig or Hoover on your line calling you a fucking communist, communist nigger, and they like, that will take you out the mood right there. Richard, is this you? <coughs> you know, back then it was just like. They had the television, but more so yeah. you go by the radio. So what we doing now, essentially with podcasting, is just the radio. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Just on bigger platforms. So you just hear, you got to go by his voice, because he was personally probably calling people, too. Oh, Jay? Richard. Richard? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. No, Jay Edgar, I, don't, I, I doubt it. And we're we going to eventually get to him as well. I just want to get to him now. So um, Jay Edgar Hoover, he pretty much uh, started the Cointel Pro. So he said, uh, so I got in my notes. Jake Edgar Hoover gave the FBI order to, ex- to expose, disrupt, misdirect, uh, discredit, and neutralize anyone who he saw as a threat to the government. And some of the presidents, some presidents such as Eisenhower and everyone's favorite, JF, JFK, have signed off on some of his executive orders for the COINTELPRO. So, um, you know, everybody loved JFK. Never fucked on him or his family. Well, his family, obviously, God don't fuck with his family. Because they all curse. <laughs> motherfuckers curse. One so of them, he, he went to the island. He got ate up, I think. Yeah, I think one of them motherfuckers got lost in a Bermuda Triangle. There you sure. go, yeah. Yes. I'm thinking about the um, one of the Rothschilds kids or somebody, or the uh, Rockefeller kids. That motherfucker went to the island. They ate him up, so yeah. So, yeah, you said you don't fuck with his family. And obviously, somebody else don't fuck with his <laughs> right. family also, so. Cause you ever heard the theory that they built the house on top of like a, a Indian burial ground and that gave them a curse or some shit like that? Yeah, I heard it also. I heard yeah. like they pops also did something. He was bootlegging. Yeah, he was bootlegging and somebody cursed him and whatnot. Yeah, them Indians cursed him. So it's just like that lake in Georgia near yeah. Atlanta. Oh, Lake Lanier. Yeah, see. I'm gonna do an episode about Lake Lanier also. You, you on your own on that one? Hey. That could be low-key, low like, five minutes. Hey, don't take y'all asses over there. I'm going to have to have an Atlanta nigga. I'm going to have to have Keith on that episode. Talk about Leyland there. He be talking about Leyland there also. Yeah. A lot. But go over there. I'll shoot the fuck yeah, out that there. Shit, that shit's <laughs> <laughs> late. <laughs> yeah, apparently Leyland there curse, man. It is. I think, and then the white folks keep taking their ass over there, like, swimming. Like, my nigga, some grab me. They keep saying shit grabbing my leg. Why would I go? I think Julio Jones almost died out there. They grabbing pe- the fucking ghosts or whatever that's at the bottom keep grabbing people's legs. Yeah, and that shit's a, it's a man-made lake also. It's not like a real lake. Yeah. First of all, why people take their asses to lakes anyway? I seen Friday the 13th. There ain't, ain't that many beaches out there. I don't think it is. Is there beaches in Atlanta? Uh, Probably not. So it's probably really ain't got no choice. I don't know. I'm so used to Jacksonville. We got a thousand beaches. So. Why would you go to a beach in Atlanta anyway? Yeah, you're right. You should have went to the beach yesterday. There's some hoes at the beach yesterday. Nigga. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in the crib while it's safe. Yeah, it was some hoes, bro. We thought it was supposed to be talking about Cointel Pro, but it was some hoes at the beach yesterday. Well, I was they they probably that. had hoes in Cointel Pro. They probably didn't look good, though. All right, so, yeah, so the Cointel Pro also, yeah, they literally had women in the Cointel Pro, too, because, they, cause, you know, they had feminist organizations. So one of the things they had, they would do to these organizations were – they will have FBI agents uh, disguise themselves as members of these organizations. So what I learned was they did have, they was going at the feminist women, the the feminist group. So I'm assuming they had to have women FBI agents pose as uh, feminist women. I mean, f- as women, unless they had some niggas doing some Mr. Doubtfire shit, <laughs> which, which would be... Back then, that would have really got you killed. <laughs> so I don't even think they were allowed that. And I can't say it's a word that I want to use <coughs> that they crazy. probably would say in Cointel Pro. But maybe so, because Jagger Hoover, you know what I mean? He was in the range. I don't know what type of car they had back then, the Chrysler 1. <laughs> he was in the Chrysler 1 with he a dress on. He was in the OG range. 
Yeah, he, he was in the OG range with, with the dress on. I seen the movie. Yeah, that's oh, that's another thing about Jay Hoover, man. He was just he was uh he was racist, he was homophobe. He was a coon allegedly. Coon? Because Essence magazine in 2011 said that he was probably a black man. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I ain't I ain't going to fuck that word up, so he do look like he kind of like he do he's, So you think he light skinned? Well, Mulatto's back then was like Mulatto now. Yeah. You, you can't really tell. He do got a little tan to him. And then I think they actually looked up his DNA or they went down his ancestry and they said he he probably had the whole thing of the quarter black. Maybe. Okay. But they allegedly they said he was black. Mm, that's interesting. On what basis? I don't know, but it would make sense because he was going that. hardest yeah. towards... I mean, nobody hates like family. He was going hardest towards his own people more than any yeah. other organization. And also, he was homophobic, and he was a well-known cross-dresser. Yeah, so those that tend to hate people that, you know, are different, I'll say that, they, they tend to be in the closet, so. That's weird. No, it's just, you know, it's insecurity. It's just like fat people hating on other fat people. Motherfucker, you fat. Why are you exactly. hating on a fat person? Exactly. And I'm just like, bro, just is come out the clock I don't know he was just a weird he's in hell so it don't even matter what Jay Edgar Hoover was doing yeah, so. and it's it's a different time too like you you get your it, it, that was a scary ass time you get your ass beat for anything if you cough yeah. like you probably get killed so you, why you got William O'Neill up so we was just talking about um, infiltrating in different groups and whatnot. and uh, the main example is William O'Neill when he infiltrated the Black Panther organization and had Fred Hampton killed but you know, he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only person that was probably investigating. They they probably used him as the front man, but they obviously had somebody else that was there just in case he messed up. Yeah. Because the movie showed he was kind of like, oh, maybe this isn't so bad. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to do something. Well, that one dude they killed was definitely an informant. Let me see. Because I have it right now. Yeah, draw it up. So. I'm reading one paragraph. Roy M. Mitchell, FBI agent, said in a disposition that he had drawn up detailed sketches of the layout of the five bedroom apartment and the placement of his furniture that gave the information to assistant states attorney Richard Javuko, however you now say the cracker's name, on December 2nd, authorized the raid. So they had a detailed layout of where Fred Hampton got killed at. Conduct an investigation for a special agent grant directed by. I'm looking up to see if they have anybody named that was involved besides maybe Wilm O'Neill. They used the gang intelligence unit. So in this article, I don't really see too much. I, don't know. I remember only just seeing William O'Neill's one. Of course, there's obviously more, but I think he they just gave him all the credit for the shit. Of course, they were they they actually allegedly killed an informant. They shot him and burned him. Yeah, and it goes back to that saying. Did they say kill himself? Who? Uh, the informant. Nah, they okay. nah they they pinned it on. Okay, I'm surprised by that because usually they say it's the informant. On a side note, too, you know, if you go to the FBI.gov. If you go to vote, <coughs> anybody's listening, vote.fbi.gov, you can literally look up the FBI records for any city for Cointel Pro. Mm. Like, we're looking at it right now. Like, let's say, for example, if I pull up Chicago, where this happened at. The Freedom of Information, Freedom of Information and Privacy Acts, subject Cointel Pro, New Left Chicago Division. And it has the name on it. And it basically gives you essentially it's still marked out. A lot of things are marked out. But it Yeah, I heard a lot of these like these shits are like doctored and whatnot. Yeah, and I'm surprised because they released this in nineteen seventy one. A lot of these were actually put out in nineteen seventy one. There's some files I know that the government have that they said won't be released for a hundred years, like uh Obama's birth certificate. That's on lockdown for the next hundred years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Why is that a lot, though? 
They got alien. He beat them big ass ears. <laughs> that nigga's Martian Manhunter. He talked like them. And then, while I was also doing my research, it brought up the Black Stone Rangers and the Civil Rights Act and how that correlated with Black Power Movement, if you're familiar with that. And it's, a, it's a couple articles about that. Oh, yeah, I seen that. I didn't really read it because it was like so many pages. I got to like take my take some personal time to read all that shit. Yeah, no, it is. Because it talks about the Black Peace Stones, which is still... Uh, in Chicago in the LA gang as well. That's how I know about him, man. El Rukin. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm like Black Peace Stones. I'm like BPS. That's in LA. What? That was on the. Nah, that's not on it. I was about to ask, was that on the FBI site? <coughs> no, nah, this is uh, ir. Dot una. Dot edu. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't even know. How I came across this, but I think I would just. It. it, it I think I just put myself into. Of uh, this looking at everything like okay how is this correlated how how is this correlated and then you know Cointel Pro still using they still using tactics to this day because they said from 1956 to unknown which means it's still involved okay so so I don't have an answer for this question that I'm about to ask you so hopefully you got an answer for it what Incidents in recent history that you think Cointel Pro was involved in that it was obviously Cointel Pro. Well, I don't have my theories. Let me let me well, quote listen. this by saying theories. Okay. I don't need nobody hitting me up because I'm just gonna ignore your ass. It's theories. Nobody knows. Uh, I'm gonna say the the Black Lives Matter party. I knew you was gonna say that. Yeah, because since 2011, 2012, when it came out of nowhere, because I didn't hear about it prior to that. Yeah, nobody heard it. And they suppose they're they're funded by the owner of Pepsi, if I'm not mistaken, as well. That whole campaign, son. Yeah. Yeah. So the Black Lives Matter movement, they come in, somebody gets killed, and they leave. I ain't heard about the Black Lives Matter since the NBA was talking about it in October. Yeah, D Ray. Yeah. Well, he was he got a red vest on now, right? I don't know where. I don't. I haven't seen that nigga. Last I seen D Ray. I actually seen D Ray in person. He was at Complex Con. Out of all on, the places. He had on a blue vest and he had on some, you know, a, a romper. <laughs> How many white women did he have with him? Or white yeah. man, I'm sorry. He had a white man. Of course he had a white man on his arm. Okay. What was his name? I don't know. He like a Lester. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> white man named Lester. I don't know that white man. I don't, name. I don't think that's his type. I don't think that's D Ray. Oh, yeah. He had a, you know, white man. Uh, so, like, D Ray, Netta. You know, Darren Seals, he called him out. He smacked him. I matter for he smacked D-Ray. You talking about Who? Cy Netta? Is his name Netta? I don't Netta. Know. The, I don't know her actual name. I think her name like Janetta. You know Netta with the N-E-T-T-A-A? What's the name, girl? Who? You're not talking about... Uh... No, she's a, she was a part of like the Black Lives Matter movement, okay, too. let me see. She's like a Twitter personality. Oh, shit. She called her an activist. No, uh, okay. It's N-E-T-T-A. N E. You thought I was talking about Kaepernick chick? Yeah. Nah. Netta. You don't know the last name? Let's put Black Lives Matter. I bet her name pop up. That bit ain't popping up. Hold on. She a big woman. She a big woman. She healthy. That's her. Okay. Janetta. Okay, I think Janetta I'm Elsie. <coughs> she was real. She was real big in the Black Lives Matter movement. She kind of been quiet. Her and D-Ray went quiet around the same time. And, of course, you still see Sean King around. Which asked the question, are they informants? Maybe. Nobody know where they came from. Now, I will say and this. That, that cracker, what's his name? I will say this. Netta, I've, I did see Netta on Twitter before the whole, before um, Mike Brown mm-hmm. went down and uh, Ferguson riots went down. I did see her. She used to do like different shit, like, uh, like for example, if somebody got discriminated against that worked at Walmart. She'd go mm-hmm. into Walmart and kind of like make a riot and whatnot about uh, different employees that have been discriminated. She used to do shit like that, and then she went um, when uh, Ferguson's situation went down. She kind of went out there. And she blew up. And I think, I want to say she was on the cover of Essence Magazine. And it kind of like, when she started doing shit like that, it's kind of like a little kind of like, 
Why are you on Essence Magazine? Um, Sean King, Talcum X. He's another one. Yo, is this dude Puerto Rican? He say he black, man. I don't know what Talcum X is, man. Oh, man. He look like Elder Bars. They showed his parents. Like, his parents are just straight up white. You think he John B? Yeah, this nigga ain't gonna fool me because he got a part in his head and that little ass mustache. <laughs> he looking like Pierre. Well, Sean King just, just Sean King has done been exposed for stealing money plenty of times. So yeah, that just recently know. happened, right? A couple months ago. It happened every other month. Like he literally, it was a, uh, um, I wish I knew, bro. Name. It was a black guy that got wrong. He got executed because mm-hmm. he was wrongfully wrongfully convicted of a murder, I think. Mm-hmm. And he got executed, and he kind of like. Uh, he used his death to like fund his book and whatnot. Yeah, he was like to learn about why this is bad. Buy yeah. my book. Yeah, exactly. When uh, Rachel Dawson gonna wear a Black Lives Matter shirt? I'm shocked that ain't happening. <coughs> now the term Black Lives Matter, it's nothing wrong with the Black Lives. The term Black Lives Matter, it's just the organization that's kind of like clearly something's going on with that shit. Right. Right, because it's they came around and you know you got an organization like the NBA. They did it for a second. It was like, all right, yeah, it's up out of here. We get money. It's just the same thing as sponsorships because now sponsorships, for the most part, are based on black people, especially yeah. in the NBA. It's black products, it's black people on Sprite commercials and all that. So it's like, what else can you sell? You can't just have Gatorade anymore. Yeah, like who the fuck drink Gatorade but me? Yeah. Yeah, and it made the movement look weird too, because you have somebody like Myers Leonard with a Black Lives Matter T-shirt on, and he clearly a fucking racist. And standing, fact like check the claim donation. Pepsi Co pledges four hundred million to Black communities. When one hundred million to the Black Lives Organization matter? Well, Mike Brown pops came out the other day. He said he won twenty million for Black Lives Matter. Not him personally, to go to Ferguson, to go to the community. They got it. They got it, but now I don't know if they're going to give it to him. They not. <laughs> they definitely not. They got it, though. Because I first, when did you first hear it? It was before. It was right around when I didn't hear Black Lives Matter until Mike Brown died. Yeah, because they didn't have it. Uh... What's the young boy that got killed out here in Miami? Oh, Trayvon. Yeah. It was Orlando. And, and Trayvon, that, yeah. That shit that sounded about right. And uh It kinda it kinda like trickled down because uh Trayvon died, um, Tamir died, Tamir Rice. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not really saying in order, but I'm just saying these the three deaths that kinda like changed things pretty much. Uh Trayvon, Tamir Rice, um, and then Mike Brown, so those three in a row, like back to back, kind of like changed things. But I didn't see me personally. I didn't see the landscape change until Mike Brown died. Yeah, he's still walking around unharmed. So you think about George Michael Zimmerman? Oh, George Zimmerman. And he might be an agent. Shit, he might. Yeah, he might be a Cointel Pro too. Because he sold a gun on eBay. I didn't even know you could sell guns on eBay. And that's a, a different thing. They say he diff, he do like, like they say he sold like a portrait of Trayvon, and he got like a million dollars or something. Like like how is he selling this shit? Right. Who's buying? And how's yeah? Who's buying this shit? Who like who he how he selling it? Who who buying it? And why are they letting him sell it? And where he at selling that? Right. And nobody know where he at. Nobody know where the fuck he at. Last time somebody seen him was when that white guy started shooting at him. Yeah. And that was like in fucking, what was that, in Arizona or some shit like that? Yeah. It wasn't in Florida. He walking around looking the same. And that was eight years ago? Nine years ago. When all that happened. He got to work somewhere. Right. Like, I am I'm, i don't know if selling a million dollar portrait still going to have you just low. Like, he low, low. He could be an agent. A lot of these shootings could be because a lot of these people are agents. Yeah. And what happened to the police officer, Officer uh, Darren, that killed Mike? Like, what does he do for a living? And they had the cameras, right, in the park 
where Mike Brown got killed. Oh, uh, yeah, they had that in the surveillance in the store also. And he got away. Yeah, he got away. Yeah. But then they, look, it is simple as police are just killing black people, yes. But you got to look at how, I look at things how in the chain reaction. I, I look at how things prosper from that to, okay, it's the same song and dance that we've been seeing. The George Floyd thing. Before that, it's the same thing. And it seems to always happen around a season. It seems to be like last year, it was like, all right, everybody in the crib. Uh, let's wait a little bit till June. Yeah. And then it's just like the timing of everything going on now. It's, it's been kind of peaceful, even though, you know, Corona's still out here. But then they got the Asian shooting. Yeah. It, it seems to take place I'm, yeah, very I'm, often. I'm scared with the George Floyd situation, too, because they gave his family that big settlement. So that let me think, like, they about to let those cops off. No, they are. I, I, always, I always expect it. Yeah, that's why I want people was happy they got that big settlement. I like, I'm happy they got reimbursed, but like something about to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, somebody about to get off. And they hoping the right another riot happens, but that that that's still wild. That during we definitely lived in history last year. Like, damn, while everybody's supposed to be in the crib, they out protesting. Exactly. And then they had the curfew. That that second curfew. A little bit different from that first one. That first one's still weird. Oh, you talking about the first COVID? Yeah, the COVID curfew. Oh, that shit only lasted. What was you at when that shit? When in Orlando. Happened? In Orlando? Bro, that bitch only lasted like two days. Because it's, Orla- it's Florida. Yeah. They did a curfew like two nights. <laughs> and they were literally, when you, if you was on that road, you got pulled the fuck over. Oh, Instantly. no, them crackers. Them crackers uh, pulled me over. What you doing? Bitch coming from work. <laughs> like she wasn't wilding on me But I still You know what I mean I'm from LA Every yeah. cop is the same to me So I'm like bruh I did one of these numbers This bitch said Don't put your hands down Nope I seen this movie <laughs> before I'm from LA So And I, it's so crazy Cause like um, When I was I was at I was at work And they was like Oh we gonna send you a letter Kinda like a little Exempt letter I was like Nigga how I'm gonna pull my phone out To show them the letter They gonna shoot my ass Give me a big ass poster To put on my exactly. car Exactly Like we gonna Yeah we see you Little document I was like Alright yeah And then when I told them that They were like They looked at it They were like It's the motherfucker right bro <laughs> Like yeah <laughs> They might shoot this nigga I mean they might shoot yeah. <laughs> oh. They might shoot Anthony yeah. I mean nigga I mean Anthony yeah. Nigga Anthony oh, no. They gonna shoot his ass yes. He's been here a very long time. Pretty good employee. So I was like, bro, I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to pull this letter out, my nigga. But speaking of letters, man, so one of the main Cointel Pro targets was MLK. So after uh, MLK did the I Have a Dream speech, one of these uh, agents, I think his, I forgot his first name. I know his name was Sullivan. He marked MLK as the most dangerous Negro of the future, and he needed to be stopped. So um, after the I Sullivan, William C. Sullivan, William C. Sullivan. There mm-hmm. you go. <clears throat> so um, after he did the speech and whatnot, uh, all his phones were tapped. They put bugs all over his crib. I don't know. Uh, I didn't really do the research. I don't know how they were able to get inside MLK crib and do all this shit. You know they've been watching. The FBI has been watching his family for years, right? Oh Not yeah, I knew him. about that. His grandfather, his pops, him. The, the three generations of just watching before the FBI was established though I yeah. should say that they was watching the King family for a while yeah I didn't I should have looked up like I wonder how, what the exact technique was for them to fucking go through his house like did he, they wait till he went on like maybe a trip or something they just went up in his house to put bugs all over like say how the fuck did they do that they're like that that that's the only logical thing cause back then it wasn't like alright them bugs was pretty big they wasn't you know, they wasn't huge, but still. Yeah, it's not the same now. Some now they just put like a little, little drone thing by your by your front door, and they can hear everything in your fucking house. Oh, they doing it now. Back then, they used to have to they had to literally take your phone apart. Yeah. Put a bug in it. Put your phone back together. They got to do it for every phone. They got to do it for everything. So, how was they? I don't know. Did they wait till he was doing a little? He went to do a speech somewhere, like somewhere, and then they just like went through his crib, like absolutely. Uh, they wait till his kids was kid. gone. Yeah. It had to be one of them because they clock you. They clock you when you don't know it. They clock you. 
So it, they got in the crib, took the rotary phone apart, and they did that. They probably used the, also the technique that they used during uh, Pearl Harbor before that World War I. Uh, what is it called? When they go by the numbers, when you dial the numbers and they can hear the frequency. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, so they probably could, you can use that as well, too. Know what phone numbers you call. Probably call the phone number. Like, hello, this is Sutton some residence. When they used to have to say that, yeah. hang up. Like, all right, cool. That's we, crazy. We so after months and months of uh, getting surveillance and uh, recordings of MLK, which kind of which um, consisted of uh, personal phone phone calls and phone calls of him cheating and whatnot of, of his wife Coretta, but that that don't got nothing to do with anything. But that's just what they had on tap. Yeah, that's so, a part of the FBI King suicide letter. So literally, yeah, they sent him uh, something that called was called the quote unquote. MLK suicide package, which is fucking ridiculous, and it had a letter. I'm not gonna read this whole letter. I'm just gonna read some of it. It's fucking ridiculous. It said, "Dr. King, if you or your uh, low grade abnormal personal behavior, I will not dignify your name." So he said he not even. Gonna, I said Dr. King out of respect when I read this, but on the letter it just say King. I said Dr. King, but on the letter it just say King. He said. Uh, whoever sent this letter said your name with uh, either a mister or a reverend or doctor and your last name calls to mind only to the type of king such as King Henry the eighth and his what is it uh, the, let's find on this motherfucker a little and his countless sets of adultery and immoral conduct lower than that of a beast so they just going in on him. They talking about how he was a adulterer and all different stuff. So the last paragraph, it said, King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what that is. You have to. You have just 34 days in which to do this. This exact number has been selected for a specific reason. It is definitely practical. See the the font on this motherfucker is so little. Small as hell. Pra- it's a, I think it's a uh, practical significance. You are a you you are done. So I'm gonna stop right there. So this letter is pretty much telling you that uh, giving MLK 34 days to kill himself or shit will be released. Do? Yeah. So of course MLK did not kill himself, and everything they had, every uh, recording they had. They gave it to the public. They gave it to the news outlets, and they did smear campaigns on MLK on the news and whatnot, letting people know that he did cheat, in his, cheat on his wife, different uh, meetings he was having, all kind of shit, his, his plans, uh, pretty much all his moves, mm-hmm. they reported on the news. I want to know how that phone call went with him and his wife. Um, I've watched different things about Coretta. She um she knew he was cheating. She just didn't really care because she said the movement was bigger than her marriage. She said that. She literally said the movement was bigger than her marriage. So she really she knew he was what he was doing. She just really didn't give a fuck. Oh, she I can't wait to have this conversation Sunday. <laughs> I'm gonna add more to it. It's <laughs> you so dumb. Bitch, you get mad and yo dude, we just talking about the general sense now. Dudes up here making millions of dollars, bitch. You get mad because of one phone number. He ain't even text the bitch. Exactly. This man making history and Coretta, like, I know he making history. Fuck it. Let him get some white pussy on the side. Exactly. Exactly. I respect it. Shout out to Coretta. Right. She held it down for him. So there you go. Uh, bitch, I'm out here yeah. getting rock thrown at me. <laughs> and you want to trip about a bitch I ain't seen. I ain't have it in my notes, but you remember that woman that stabbed MLK, right? Mm-hmm. You think she was part of Cointel Pro? No. You just think she was crazy? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah bitch, you got a wife? Yeah, bitch. You see me? On, well, you heard me on the radio talking about her. I just was always wondering about it because I always thought it weird. Like, she just came out of nowhere. She just started stabbing him at a, at a book signing. Like, I thought I always thought that was just weird as fuck. No, he, he probably fucking around. What city was that in again? I forgot. He probably, because he was, you know what I mean? He had him in Alabama where he was at, Georgia, of course. So, yeah, when he was making his uh, Negro Circuit tour, 
he, he probably she probably was just pissed at him. But she probably could have been Quintel Pro. I don't know, but he if he if he was out here like that, it could have been a crazy bitch too. Yeah. Also, I got in my notes. Um, other activists that were besides Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, Malcolm X and Stokely Hathaway. Not Stokely Hathaway. Stokely Carfire. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Shout out to the homie Stokely. <laughs> Michael Bivens is his name now. So this Stokely Carmichael was one of the other targets. So one of the things that we, that we was reading about with Cointel Pro was the FBI kind of uh, made division within the groups. Like they made them argue within each other. Possibly, do you think that uh, the whole situation with Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam was a part of Cointel Pro. They probably added some fuel to their fire to, to make what happened to the the shooting of uh, Malcolm X. They probably had some outsiders that decided to convert to Islam, decided to come in and just kind of, you know, so to speak, fire everybody up. You know, he, yeah. he say, she say shit. So, or it's some niggas that went by the Willie Lynch. They went by that mindset. Oh, fuck it, we ain't messing with what they they're talking about. We're gonna do our own thing too, because then we got to get into the conversation about who really killed Malcolm X, and you know they say Elijah Muhammad did it, and they say this happened. So it it, it goes to it maybe it was a lot of federal agents involved. Yeah, that, that's all I can say is maybe because they still <laughs> it's so many that happened shit fifty some years ago maybe yeah. 60 years ago and they still don't know exactly who shot Malcolm X and how it's weird yeah. that they shot upward but then they said the bullets came down it's yeah. the same thing that happened with MLK yeah that's what I was asking because it's never it's nothing confirmed but I was like it's a possibility that the FBI had something to do with it like yeah. they kind of like added friction to their uh, to what was going on yeah absolutely so that's crazy so shit I would credit uh, that to the to Cointel Pro too just like we credit uh, uh, MLK's death, I I add Malcolm X to it too. Yeah, they along, tried to pass along with, it. Along also. with Fred Hampton. In two thousand two and two thousand five, by Democratic Senator John Kerry from remember him <laughs> from Massachusetts in two thousand six, and by Democratic Representative John Lewis from Georgia R I P in two thousand ten, but they never passed by Congress. So they was trying to get the actual uh, file of it. A copy of the letter is known to exist in J. Edgar Hoover's confidential files at the National Archives. Mm -hmm. So it just he got a personal copy wherever the National Archives are. We gotta break into that motherfucker. Shit, bro. You know that security. You got the laser beams that shot him down. <laughs> yeah, shit gonna slice a nigga in half. All right, so um, so of course you know all this Cointel Pro shit was uh going on. Nobody knew about this until it was exposed. And I know Banks, you just talked about it in 1971. And actually, what happened was some activists broke into an FBI office during the Ali, who was also on the Cointel Pro list, during the Ali and Frazier boxing match. They stole the documents and eventually leaked everything to the press. So they waited till everybody was watching the damn boxing match, broke into the office, and said, hey, these motherfuckers wilding. That's crazy. No, there's a rest of us tonight. I'm trying to get the the dates for that. This is the Martin Luther King Breakfast Collection. I know it happened in 1970. Well, it happened, obviously happened on the day of the Boston match, but I just know it was in 1971. I'm trying to see. I'm looking up something else as we're talking. Yeah, it was during the uh, Ali and Frazier match. The Martin Luther King. Have you read about this? The Martin Luther King Jr. Records Collection Act or the MLK Records? Act, I'm, 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 I'm familiar to. with it, but yeah, you can talk about it for the listeners. So it just <coughs> history in the King files in the years, and I quote: "In the years after the 1968 assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., reports emerged that the government was destroying sensitive documents related to the murder case. The FBI was criticized for appearing unusually reluctant to release records pertaining to King in 1977." Judge John Lewis Smith ruled against Bernard Lee in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in a lawsuit in order that the King's files be sealed for 50 years. Wow. 
1983 Senator Jesse Helms attempted to open the files because he believed that the release of FBI records would incriminate King and prevent the establishment of Martin Luther King Day as a federal holiday. He was denied by Judge Smith. So, actually, within six years from now, the documents are thus to be released. The FBI called the files Merkin. <laughs> M-U-R-K-I-N for Murder King, the official designation of the Martin Luther King assassination investigation. And mm. information about so they're going to be opening up in six years. I was about to ask, like, what what, what exact time would that be for now? Six it, years. It don't, it don't say, but 2017 or 2027. Mm. But due to known FBI policies, many of its records may be destroyed before that date. Thus, leaving many questions about the King's assassination of course, unresolved. Of course. <laughs> so it'll come out in six years, but a lot of it will be taken apart, destroyed. The main thing we need to know. Yeah, just like those files that you put on the FBI with all those fucking black marks on them. Exactly. Like, they could post it, but, like, they get doctored. That's why everything with the government is bullshit. Let's see about the autopsy. Go to archives.gov. They got a couple things relating to the findings on his assassination. The shot that killed Dr. King was fired from the bathroom window at the rear of the rooming house at 422 Half South Main Street in Memphis, which is now a historical landmark. James Earl Ray, who I've heard didn't actually shoot MLK. And they talk about him purchasing a rifle. They also talk about, if you look it up, the bullet that was used to actually kill him. That shit crazy, man. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, they wait until he's going to... Because also, uh, I don't know if you ever knew this, but MLK didn't want nobody to know he smoked. So they waited till he went on the balcony and smoked to shoot him. Right. So they can add it. it it's a domino effect, so to speak. Yeah. Man, I didn't want to look up family life. I was trying to look up something else. Uh, Trying to look up, see exactly how long they've been trapped or well, looking after him and his family. Well, from the from what um, I saw was it was before, it was after he did the "I Have a Dream" speech, which I'm pretty sure was way before that. They just used that as like a marking point to say, "Hey." When he did that speech, we started uh, following him, but I'm pretty sure they were doing that shit way before then. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm trying to look up his father right now and how it correlated, because like I said, they was trapping. They was looking after the family for years. Investigation. That's a lot of shit. <coughs> You can listeners. You can you can you, you can pretty much add his um, MLK's mom to it too, because you know she got killed in the church mm-hmm. by a by a black person. So an informant. Uh, no, I would. I don't know. I would. Uh, it was just some crazy motherfucker. So Alberta. I don't know. I would probably add him to the Cointel Pro. Alberta Williams King. Cause he claimed he claimed he killed her for no reason, but it's kind of the weird that a black person would just go up in the damn church and just kill a woman. Yeah. Six years after assassination, she cut down Reverend Martin Luther King. A man walked into Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta and killed the late civil rights leader's mother as she played the organ for morning services. Yeah, it might might be a chance that the FBI sent his ass, too. Yeah, he shouted, I'm taking over here. 
Both the bull pit and just pulled out a gun. Nobody else was hit either. He just went up. He just pretty much just went up at the church and just shot her only. He died in prison in 1995 at age 44. I wonder if they say it was due to suicide. That seems to be the reincurring thing when it's an inside job. Oh, yeah, for sure. Whenever it's an inside job and they say suicide, it's a lie. That means they killed you. Same thing that just happened with Jeffrey Epstein. When we went to the cell far left, the security guard fell asleep. Y'all say it's suicide. And then old girl, too. That was part of all that. She just been in the cell for damn near a year now, and they ain't heard from her since. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she been exposed to a lot of shit, too. No, she gone. She up out of here. They just ain't said shit. She ain't had no trial or nothing. How you die in New York jail? Even, um, well, fuck Jeffrey Epstein. But, um, Aaron Hernandez, you seen the I Am uh, Athlete episode? Uh, no, I didn't. When they was talking about, they was talking, because you know all of them was cool as fuck with Aaron Hernandez. None of them think he killed himself. I don't think so either. You know, I got to start doing some more research on that, and that's maybe something we got to come back to because it started the whole. So the term CTE, we know people that you know played in the NFL that we don't personally know them, or I don't. Yeah. That you know <coughs> something off, but then it started with Junior Seau killing himself, and then from there it was like a chain reaction. Yeah. And then with Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> You know, he killed himself, and then we got the documentary last year when they talk about, well, maybe he was gay. It's like, yeah. Wow, well, you know about that years ago. You gonna wait? That's the problem with me. You start revealing shit after somebody died. Like, fucking talk about me while I'm yeah. alive. And also, man, you don't really know what going through anybody head. Cam Newton, he said he talked to him the day before he killed himself. He said, I ain't know that. Yeah, he said he was still. He said Aaron Hernandez was in like amazing spirits. He was like, he felt like he was about to. Something was about to happen where he felt like he was about to get off the case. And he said, next thing you know, he looked on the news and said he killed himself. So, I don't know. But you never know what people going through. But he right. said he was in good spirit before he talked to him. Right. It's not I know they went to – I know they went – of course, they went to Florida together. I didn't know they was that close. Cam? Yeah, Cam. They played, they played together. I didn't know that. Florida. Florida. Florida Gators. Newton? Yeah, Cam Newton. He played for the Gators. I thought he went to Auburn. No, he went. He went to. He went to the Gators first. He got in trouble for stealing them laptops, and then he had to go to a. a I think he had to go to like a JUCO or some shit like that. Yeah. Fight his way back, and then he went to Auburn. Bro, I forgot all about that. That was shit. What, damn near fifteen years. No, that was. Yeah, all the yeah all them played together. Uh, Tebow. Yeah. Aaron Hernandez, Riley Cooper, not Riley Cooper. <laughs> I was say no. The racist motherfucker. Riley Cooper? What's this? I know it's something Riley. No, I think that is him. The one that said, I'll fight all you niggas at the country. Oh, uh, I'm thinking about somebody else. <laughs> okay, so it's a lot of them. Or are you talking about the one that was on the Dolphins? That uh, I feel like Riley Cooper's an actor. Can we look that up real quick? Yeah. Because remember, it was the one player that played for the Dolphins that talked about the light-skinned nigga. Riley Cooper. I was right. Okay. Dude that just beat up his girl, right? That's not him. That's somebody else. He played for the Seahawks. You do not even know. Why this cracker name came up, though? Hold on. Because that name came up too fast. I feel like I looked this up before. <coughs> well, Riley Cooper's racist. Yeah, dude. I'll fight all you niggas. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just confused by the name. He was at the Kenny uh, Chesney concert. Yeah. Which, someplace where the people that's down the street will probably say, I'll fight all you niggas at. Yeah. And then he yeah, was talking to security volume. guards. I love volume. You got to think about all them motherfuckers. When all of them play together. Cam, Riley Cooper, Tebow, Aaron Hernandez, Percy Harvin. All the motherfuckers play together. So you think they told Cam you a nigga 50 times and he just laughed at it? Nah, they wasn't. He probably, that motherfucker, Riley Cooper, if he was racist, well, he's, he, of course he was racist back then. If he, if, him being racist, he kept that motherfucker on a low. Because all them niggas go to Florida, they would have beat the fuck out of him. 
That's usually how it takes yeah, place. That's probably why when he did it at the concert, it's probably like an outburst to have to from have to hide his racism for years. Yeah. He probably had an outburst because them Florida motherfuckers, maybe Percy Harvin, uh, Aaron Hernandez, they would have beat the fuck out of him being openly racist. Well, Aaron Hernandez. He would have got his first body then. Well, he said nigga, and then he shot his girl's brother, so. No. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Where's the girl at? Never mind. She. She married like a mob boss, some mob boss. Well, god damn, pregnant. this bitch like danger. I'm sweet. Yeah. She fine, but god damn, <laughs> this bitch into the darkness. That's what she on, man. I'm good. She, she right. went from a Saints Row character to a GTA character. Yeah, she married like some mob boss and something like some Italian boss and said her had his uh, kid. So now she went from a Spanish dude called her nigga to an Italian dude called her Muliani. She's something else, man. Yeah, she hate herself. Black girl loves. <laughs> Shout out to Nas. R- Uchi Wally. All right, so I guess we're going to wrap this up, man. You got anything else you want to add, man? Hey, man. Just Yeah, I would just say, man, watch yourself, man. Don't believe the government, bro. They out there. They out They hiding a lot of shit, man. And it's just the shit we just able to Google. <laughs> right. Bro, they hiding a lot of shit, man. So just be careful, man. Don't be out here just openly just trusting the government, man. No, nah, fuck a left wing, fuck a right wing party. I know this is gonna come up in the future. And whatever we doing successfully, I don't give a fuck about no bag. Let me tell y'all that real quick. I don't care about no fucking bag. I like money, but at the same time, I don't give a shit. Uh, besides that, they always listening. Yeah. So you you can IP vanish all you want. They still listening. Yeah, they still listening. Just um, uh, I was, cause you know we got the stimmy man, so. I ain't spend my shit yet, but it's like burning a hole in my pocket. I spent my shit. You spent your shit? I respect it. That first one, that that twelve hundred, I spent that shit today, the, the same day. Yeah, I respect it. So this new one, I I it's still in my account. I have not spent it yet, it's, it's, but it's burning a hole in my pocket. So yesterday, so just just go oh, what we talking about? I'm like, all right, man. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to lose some weight, man. So I need to get a Peloton. I want to get a Peloton. I said that to myself. You know a little bike, Peloton bike? Yeah. No, nah, we don't save your money. I got you. I'm gonna help you get there. All right. We just gonna run. Well, you know I'm a runner, so I just got to get run back in running shape. That's the that's the, actually the, the quickest way to lose weight, running. Yeah. Yeah, it's the quickest way. But I was, I was trying to get like some other options too, like run and do the Peloton. But running is the most uh, running is the most effective way to lose weight ever, and it's free. But um I was like, all right, I'm gonna get a Peloton with the with the stimulus, and I just said that. I ain't Google it, I ain't look it up, I ain't do nothing. I just said, I don't want a Peloton. For the past five days, every time I go on IG, every time I go on Facebook, I see nothing but ads with Peloton. Yeah, and I'm like, bro, this is kind of this is scary. Shouts out to Nelson. He said the same thing. Like, have you ever thought about an ad and it just pops up? Yeah, I'm like, see, the thing is, that doesn't happen to me anymore. But as soon as I bookmark something on Instagram, like New Balance shoes or any type of sneakers, some Reebok soldiers, because I think I'm juvenile. <laughs> when I bookmark them, they start coming up everywhere. Yeah, you so, see them. Yeah, you see them everywhere. But I used to have that too. But this is the point where, like, you just like say it, and then you just think about it, and then like every time you go somewhere, you just see a Peloton, Peloton. I'm just seeing Pelotons. I'm like, this is kind of weird. Maybe that's God just telling you, you know, get a pel- Peloton. If that's your heart's desire. Nah, it's Jay Edgar Hoover telling me to get a pel- Peloton. That's who's telling me to get that motherfucker. Because he probably still is alive. <laughs> There's a strong possibility this dude is still alive. Yeah, racist people live, live forever. Oh, yeah, these motherfuckers. You ever seen a white, old white woman die? Yeah. Really? Uh, I was just about to say this also. This might be problematic. You know how Betty White living forever? Yeah. She might be racist, bro. Some keeping some keeping her alive. Like evil or something keeping her alive. Cause racist motherfuckers live forever. And she like 98. I'm like, bro, something. Maybe that's why Marilyn Monroe was so revered, besides being like the first hoe, the first Kim <laughs> Kardashian, because she died. Yeah. Like Young. white white hoes don't die. They just fuck up their face. They start looking like PS1 characters. Or they just... Nah, white hoes die young. Do they? Yeah. Lindsay Lohan's still alive? She... Well, she might be racist. She's racist also. 
You remember she was in fucking Vietnam trying to steal kids? Ain't racist. She's just trying to get some new Nikes fast. Nah, she's sorry, bro. You're crazy. Well, yeah, she racist. She's crazy. She's racist, ain't she crazy? So that bitch was. I wonder. I want to know how much she was spending on coke. Ooh, is he? Yeah, that's what I want to do a documentary on. Or that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk to a coke dealer in the seventies and eighties in the entertainment business. Like, how much did you make like in a day? I know a nigga that sell used to sell coke back back in the day. So I go right ask him. He had to be anonymous though. Yeah, but I want to know about the niggas that. All right, if we do Florida, Miami, but then I'm talking about LA, like entertainers, <coughs> like yeah, the, the nigga I'm talking about, nigga I'm talking about LA. Okay, he had to make at least six figures a month. Yeah, we had to. I had to tap into him. We had to keep him anonymous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because we, we had to like distort his voice. No cameras. Because Quentin Tarantino would probably still calling him. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, bro, they don't they don't quit coke. You don't quit coke. You can. Well, they say it's a, a rich person drug anyway, so, yeah. Well, shit, let's get some. That's All what right. we need to use with the stem. We got the coma pack now. I wish we ain't got no cameras. <laughs> right. There, so. You just put it up. But we got the coma pack. It's the legal shit, man. This thing got something in it. It does. Yeah, it got a little something in it. Shout out to coma pack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it, man. That's what we got. Another episode of REOPD Classified, man. Fuck the government. And that's all I got, man. Banks, you got anything you need to plug? You got a million podcasts, man. Hey, man. Uh, Banks No Rest 2 on Twitter. <coughs> B-A-N-K-S-N-O-R-E-S-T-2. Uh, don't follow me on IG because I swear every day I'm going to delete that shit even though I think I'm in a danger zone already. And that's right. the government definitely because it's Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg definitely looking at me bookmarking shit oh, and sliding the DMs. Uh, Otherwise, no, no. Shouts out to Nelson. Shouts out to Nico, Jamal, uh, my guy David. Shouts out to Black Announce Table, Black Wrestling Podcast, Black Variant, Hoops and Brews. Yeah, shout out all them brothers. Yeah. Uh, Morning, now. That's it. Uh, sign up for the Random Max of Podcast Patreon. Uh, y'all motherfuckers got y'all stimmy, so sign up for the hundred dollar. Yeah, get a hundred dollar. No more ten dollar, bro. Y'all, y'all can put that hundred dollars up. Get that hundred, man. Appreciate it. Banks got the hundred, man. I appreciate Banks, man. He got he got one of his many t shirts. I'm gonna I'm hook Banks up, man. So shout out to him. Yeah. And uh otherwise, man, am I a producer now? Yeah, you're executive producer. I'm, I got the credits for you. Oh, we got I got some ideas too. So Okay, yes. I got a hell of a lot. I'll wait till Sunday though for the okay. ideas. All right, so um with all that said, we out. Bobby Field is going through all types of physical and mental torture. But that's all right, because we said even before this happened, and we're going to say it after this, and after I'm locked up, and after everybody's locked up, that you can jail a revolutionary, but you can't jail a revolution. Right. You might run a liberator like Eric Cleave out the country, but you can't run liberation out the country. You might murder a freedom fighter like Bobby Hutton, but you can't murder freedom fighting, and if you do, you come up with answers that don't answer explanations that don't explain. You come up with conclusions that don't conclude. And you come up with people that you thought should be acting like pigs, just acting like people and moving on pigs, and that's what we've got to do. So we're going to see about Bobby, regardless of what these people think we should do. Because school is not important, and work is not important. Nothing's more important than stopping fascism, because fascism will stop us all.